Hey, pussy, are you still there? I actually admire that you can actually be this fake in like when the TV comes on, how you can just change. Thank you. You're the f scum of the earth. Yo, down to me, so I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now. Look at me now. All right, and we are back with part two of UFC 300's videos. I'm your host, Joel, along with Evan and Nick. And uh, this video is going to be, we're going to capture the prelims of UFC 300. So if you're tuning in from the early prelim video, we appreciate you following along. If you've only watched this video so far, make sure you check out the early prelim and stay tuned for the main, the main card video. Again, like always, don't forget to subscribe to the channels, like the videos, helps us grow, helps us move. We are cooking right now. We've had fighter interviews out the ass, so shit's growing, boys. We're, we're getting there, uh, but I don't want to waste any time because, again, this is the greatest fight card of the year. Um, without of all a doubt, time. Fight, best fight card of yeah. all time. So I think we no go right into this. To kick off the prelims, boys, we have a prospect in himself. Um, big fan of his, Diego Lopez. Yeah. fighting Sadiq Yusuf to kick off the prelims, kick off that 300. Um, number 13, Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Yep. Um, stylistically, it's a great fight. Diego Lopez is a very, very Menace. solid prospect. He's a hell of a fighter. Sadiq yeah. Yusuf is also, you know, top 15. So this yeah. gets Diego Lopez a rank if he wins. So there's a lot of implications with this fight. Um uh going into this uh but yeah i'll let any of you guys want to talk about it too i'm very big on diego lopez but i do like sadiq yusuf so i'm, I'm kind of 50 50 on it but i'll let you guys talk about what you guys want to talk about too so go ahead nick talk, let, give us your uh kind of thoughts on it got you guys i definitely think that diego lopez deserves to be ranked especially yeah. after his past couple fights man this is the test that he needs it's not a big jump for him i don't think it's going to be a even a big change of how he fights, how he trains for this. I got him winning this fight. I looked up a lot of information on the other guy as well. I just, I say Diego Lopez just being a straight up savage in this fight. I see, I think he's better skilled in every aspect. And uh, we see this, and then we see him get this dub, and then you see him do some big things in the future, man. I love him in this division. Yeah, I agree. I agree, I agree 100%. Here's what I'll say about Diego Lopez. Um, Diego Lopez made his UFC debut on short notice against Mostar Ivalov. Yep, but who's right, top which, eight, right? Top five. Top five. I mean, yeah. they're calling. Yeah, he's fit. Know, they're calling for him to fight Ilya for the belt. I mean, he, and he has a legitimate case. He just beat Arnold Allen. Oh yeah, Here's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. here's yeah, what right. I'll say about this though. That was on short notice. That was a decision win for Ivalov. It was unanimous. But like honestly, Diego Lopez lost that fight but won the fans because he took yeah. that fight on day's notice. Like, like crazy short notice, That's went right. against one of the most dangerous fighters in the featherweight division and not only held his own, but threatened. Like, I mean, he's then he, then now, you know, he ripped off two wins um, since then. First you round know, wins at that. Yeah. Two first round wins um, coming against Sadiq Youssef. Definitely going to be his toughest fight in the UFC to date, but I agree with Nick. I, I think I think he's better everywhere. I think he has his way. I honestly do. I think he dominates this fight. Oh, um, yes. I think he ends up getting a submission victory. His Brazilian jiu-jitsu is world it's class. Good, dude. It, it is. is yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than Diego Lopez as far as jiu-jitsu goes um, in the featherweight division. I think he has his way with Youssef. Um, he's got size on him. You know, a little bit of a yeah, five eleven. He's a pretty big featherweight. Um, you know, a, a slight reach advantage, slight leg reach advantage. Um, I love this fight. You know, for a top fifteen, I think Diego Lopez takes it convincingly. Man, I do. And I think if he does take it convincingly, it's going to set him up for something even bigger. His next fight, I think yeah. he's going to get a quick jump. You know, if he wins this one, you know, in the first round. In, in a crazy fashion i think yeah. from there the ufc goes okay we have a superstar here um we have another guy in this featherweight division who can make a name for himself let's yep. push him right into that top 10 let's get him a top 10 fight let's give him yair rodriguez let's give him mavzvar rematch let's give him yeah i'd like know, to Bre see that mavzvar evil off rematch yeah let's let's give him you know because you know 
I think to be honest, it like a win in the top between 10 and 15 is it's a perfect setup because Yair is obviously coming off two losses. Yeah. You know, he just lost to Brian Ortega. So the next person Ooh. who fights from the, the 15 to 10 ring should fight Yair, in my opinion. So um, and then we also you yeah. also have Calvin Cater will it, fighting Aljo. Uh, so you know, you did big things there too later yeah. on. Um, Brian yeah. Ortega big win. So that that I mean this featherweight division might not be getting talked about like it should um, with a lot of the, with this top 10 coming up um, recently. So, you know, there's a lot going on here, but I also agree with you fellas. I'm going to, I'm going to join the, join the band and uh, I'm going to go with Diego Lopez by finish two in a row, distance, three so. for three. We all yep. agree. I love it. Oh yep. yeah. And then the next one now, as Murky said earlier, this, this is, is not different. one you want to, yeah, this is different. This is different. This is different, yep. brother. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. <laughs> Hold on, brother. This Make is different. Women's MMA great again. Special teams, special plays, different women. Yeah. Special <laughs> teams, special plays, special players. Different Hold women. on, brother. This one's a little different, boys. We have yeah. uh, the Kayla Harrison making her UFC debut against a legend, the legend, Holly Holmes, um, who is still top five ranked. Uh, women's bantamweight after yeah. her long I'm, career, which yeah, not not saying so much. That's literally the worst division in combat sports, but it's fine. But there's a lot of implications <laughs> in this fight, and Sliced. one one big thing that's being talked about a lot is the fact that can Kayla Harrison cut that weight, make that bantamweight that bantamweight, um, and uh, you know if she does, will she be able to you know go be out the there same, be the same, and beat someone who is is. You know, yeah, Holly Holmes may have a little age to her, but let's not forget they both she's do. one of the she's one of the most technical strikers in that bantamweight division of all time. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's definitely a big fight for Holly Holmes if she if she beats her. I mean, boys, if Holly Holmes beats Kayla Harrison, this is this is big for that division. Well, it's um, it's kind of like uh, you know Kayla Harrison's coming from PFL or Bellator. Correct. PFL. Um, I mean, it just goes to show like like it's another argument that would get that would go to show you just how far ahead the UFC is Correct. talent wise above these other, you know, tier one promotions. I mean, it's not even close if, yep. you know, but Kayla Harrison's an Olympic gold medalist. I mean, yeah, but let's not note the last Olympic judo gold medalist to fight <laughs> Holly Holmes ended up face playing. She wasn't a gold. Game. She wasn't even a gold medalist. She was a medalist, not a gold medalist. Was she not Ronda Rousey? Rousey, Ronda Rousey? Bronze, bronze or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought she was a judo gold. Um, so, but anyways, let's let's not forget the last judo Olympian. We'll just call it Olympian. Yeah. To yep. fight Holly Holmes, um, ended up face face planted on the canvas. So, um, yeah. Again, big fight for Kayla Harrison. Big fight for Holly Holmes. Um, I'll start my pick. I think Kayla Harrison gets it done. Um, her power is just unique if, if she's able to even get a clinch on holly holmes i think she gets her down takes her down um and is able to you know finish or do whatever she needs but if if she's not smart enough to get her down and stands with holly holmes you just never know i mean it, you just never know what could happen with that so um that's my pick i got kayla harrison okay yeah i like i like kayla harrison in this one also um Here's the thing, man. Th this fight is where this card to me starts to make me nervous because we've seen yeah. too many people missing weight, too many things falling apart. Um, yeah. We're six days away. None of these fights have been canceled yet, right? No injuries, no, no, nothing weird. Um, I, I pray it's not too good to be true. And this fight to me. Please. That you know, Kayla Harrison fought at featherweight at 145 pounds. I believe she even fought at a, a women's lightweight division at one time, 155 pounds. Yeah, Kayla Harrison's huge. Um, well, that's eh, I apologize. That's that's kind of <laughs> fucked up to say, but you know what I mean. Listen, brother, how big is she? Um, <laughs> if you can say it, I can say it. Uh, yeah. Thick. So, Kayla Harrison, I just hope she makes weight. And I think I if, if she makes weight, um, I think she has, I mean, all the tools to beat Holly Holm. She's making a UFC debut on the biggest UFC card in history. Uh, is it too much for her? I don't think so. Both of them are a little older. Um, yeah, I like I like Kayla. I'm going to go with the debut. Very the debut. rarely does the debut work out, you know? Yeah. But, but I'm going to go with the debut. It worked for MVP. 
So, it worked yeah, for did. Michael Venom Page against Kevin Holland. I mean, but let's not forget she did lose to Larissa Pachanko in the PFL finals. Yeah, well, and Pachanko is a. Uh, I mean, she should be. You she know, should be in the UFC. Yeah, they just don't have a division for. Her, so. Yeah, but then again, this is just like Kayla Harrison. Like, it would be so much weight to cut for Pachanko. Like, right. You know, you'd almost have to bring Amanda Nunes back and and. Fight, bear, bring right cyborg back something cyborg yeah. like yes, cyborg. making women's mma great again what you need to do ufc is sign all of the best women and put them in the biggest division and then let them eat gain whatever weight they want to and then let them throw hands at it's their most old powerful. school well do you remember the point nick brought up not that long ago let them use when steroids let them all do drugs yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm telling you man yeah it'd be good i mean yeah. let, let them get big you no know? commission would ever sanction that but i think like fuck them you know what i mean we'll do it we'll do it do it on the early prelims um do it on ufc fight pass you know try to like be chill about it you know what i mean please Uh, make it like exhibition fights if you have to just pay them handsomely i mean Um, but we can also say this worst case scenario worst case scenario she does miss weight fights get fight gets canceled then we just move jalen turner and moikano up to the prelims yeah, and it starts the night off. So yep. either way it goes, you just can't go wrong with it. But I, I don't want to see this fight get canceled. So yeah, um, I got. Then, uh, go ahead. You're good. I got a uh, Kayla Harrison winning because Holly Holmes isn't doing what Holly Holmes has been known for. She's old. She's not finishing people. It's not going to happen. I don't think at all. I agree. Yeah. Fair enough. So now we got our our next next fight of the night, man. Uh, men's featherweight. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling making his debut um, at featherweight uh, against yeah. a guy who's also a killer. Um, funny story. We just got it, had a great interview with a guy over at the New England cartel um, who fights and has is trained with Calvin Cater. And, and um, he was kind of saying like, we're he's riding with Cater hard. He hopes he finishes Sterling. And uh, I think we all are on kind of the same page here too maybe i don't know how y'all feel but this is a tough match for aljo um you're stepping up with power but the best thing about aljo's um in my opinion in his um in his perspective is the fact that he was never really a small guy for his previous division now nah, he, so he was up a weight, weight bully class, at phantom weight anyway correct yeah so him coming up a weight class isn't going to really play too much of a of a factor in my opinion um, because he was already a big dude. He's a he's massive for his size. So it was he should have came up a weight division year like you know a year ago. Um, yeah. but now he gets his first fight at, at featherweight against Calvin Cater. Um, I like the matchup. I, I think it's a great first fight for Aljo, and I think it's a great stamp for Cater to make his push into the top five if he wants to. Uh, yeah. what about you, fellas? I like Cater. Um Cater has 91% takedown defense in the UFC. Yep. Um which against a guy like Aljo that's going to try to, you know, close distance and take you down, um that's a that might be the most important stat of the fight. Um if he can keep it on the ground, he's obviously has a significant height and reach advantage, well not too much of a reach advantage, but he's 5'11 to Aljo's 5'7. Um you know, hopefully he can piece Aljo up on the feet. Obviously, the last time Aljo fought, you know, he rushed in and and caught a right hand, and you know, ended ended up ended up on the mat with an early night in the second round. Um, so you know, I like I like Cater being able to do that to him. Um, I'll never in my life root for Aljamain Sterling. Um, <laughs> he was a fraudulent bantamweight champion. He got the belt by disqualification, like a fraud yeah. does. Um, yeah. And then we should have seen you know, Piotr Jan's re- like we should we should get to see that one day. And if this was back then, I mean Piotr Jan at that time was a savage dude. He was yeah. he was a savage in that division, and it's such bullshit that he because he would have been the champ that night. Outside of that illegal knee, yeah, he was um, beating him. He was yep. beating him. Now you know, obviously Aljo came back. They fought again. Aljo beat him by yep. in a close decision. Yep. Um, I don't care. I don't care. I agree, though. I think I'm going to go with Cater as well. Uh, I'm going to go Cater by finish. Oof. I got uh, I got Aljo actually doing it, man. I had this weird theory about him that, like, he didn't have a choice to be in this weight division. He was like, hey, we didn't want you to be champion for a while. You can fight again, but not in this division. O'Malley's been Dana White's guy from the jump. 
So yeah. I think he actually, you know, has been forced. You want to stay here with your boring ass? You got to stay in this division now. I think he wants to get a contract extension. I think, I mean, he wants to show out. So I'm yeah. going to have him taking this one. It's fair. On. He's an ex-champion. Yeah. But I mean, I had that weird theory, man. It's like, dude, he's, I don't think he wants to be there. Well, part of that was he wouldn't fight Marab. So yeah, is, like that played a big factor into him moving into the featherweight division. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if he was so much forced, but he essentially he was because yeah. I mean, eventually if you and your teammate are the top prospects in the featherweight division, you lose the title. Um, you know, Marab, you and Marab refuse to fight each other. I understand, but like, obviously you can't, be in the top three top five of a division not wanting to fight the other top prospects in the division or top ranked fighters in the division so somebody had to go somewhere um aljo you know had his time at bantamweight he had a good reign um you know but he got he fucking did. flatlined and you know <laughs> yeah, so, you, thought, you thought o'malley was someone to uh to fear moving forward but yeah. you got a whole nother man sitting at right. top of the throne right now ready to you know pretty much light the ufc on fire as far as the fan base goes um but i want to ask you this and tell me if you think this is wild to think about could you ever see a world where we see from top to bottom like guys like steve urseg as a champ oh, rob as a champ and then Aljamain as a champ all three in that lower division man what a time yeah to be alive yeah, I mean, I don't. And then you got Dukas, Drakus, Duplessis as the champ. Like, oh, he yeah. was long. Could could this? Could we see some of the weirdest champions again in 2024? I, yes. I hope not, man. <laughs> I think so. We, we could. We definitely could. I mean, I I think I I I think Marab has a good chance, but I do like O'Malley in that matchup. Honestly, the more and more I think about it, I'm more and more and more up to O'Malley. Um. Urseg against uh, Pantoja, I, dude. It's a, that's such a crazy fight that that's even a thing and is happening. Um, I, love I love Pantoja, fight, but like, dude, Urseg, dude, Urseg's got some power for a 125er, man, and yeah, he could light his shit light. up. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then you know, same thing at featherweight. I, I, you know, obviously, you know how I feel about the featherweight champion, and I think sure. that I don't think that changes anytime soon. So true that so and then to cap off the prelims we have our featured prelim fight of the night yuri prohashka coming off of a loss in a title shot against alex Bejeda versus alexander rakic who is coming off of a loss yep. um to jan, jan blahovic yeah. so um again two guys both coming off losses winner of this likely gets either number one contender fight or fights for the title depending on how things shake up in that division yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, boys, this is, this is a big fight. One, it's a big fight for Yuri to, to get his, to, to make a statement and say that, you know, yeah, he lost to Pajeda, but he's still championship caliber. And, yeah. and then it's also a chance for Rochick to kind of, you know, defend the fact that maybe he lost to, he may have lost to Jan Blahovich, but he still can be a contender in that, in that division. So, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this because to be frank, and this is me personal, I I, I don't know much about Rochik like that. Oh. I haven't really watched much, much of his fights in his career uh, like I have Yuri's. Um, so I, I do think Yuri gets it done. Um, and I think Yuri gets his name right back into the mix to get, get, get there and fight for a title again. Um, but I don't know how you guys feel if you guys want to add anything to that. Yeah, man, uh, I got Serbia power, dog. Yeah, I got I got Yuri losing. You got Yuri, Yuri losing? Yeah, man. I, I I didn't know much about um Alexander at all. And I look at his record, dude. He's a fucking beast. Yeah, he's and a savage. I, I think Yuri's a little overrated, and I think I might see that. You think Yuri's I've overrated? Him. Yep. I've I've thought it for a while now. I thought him beating Gro Grover Texera was not impressive. That man was old as fuck. I, I kind of that. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't and, yeah uh, but then that's also a good thing a lot too. Yeah, but, he was losing. I don't. I just. I don't. I don't know, man. I've always thought like that wild play is good. That was good when you were fighting in Risen over there in Japan and stuff like that. But for as the UFC, I mean, he's had some crazy knockouts coming in. I just. I don't know. I I'm, I haven't been as impressed as I should be with him. So I got him taking this dub and losing, boy. 
Fair enough. Fair. I Fair mean, take. but let's let's be honest here. Regardless of if he wins or loses this fight, his stare down in the octagon between him and Alex Bejeda yeah. is like that's like top three greatest stare downs of all time outside of your. You know, <laughs> it your, was, dude. God. Like Especially somebody, when they grabbed each other's shoulders. Yep, and looked yeah. each other dead in the eye like that. Yeah. That's that's an ice cold stare, man. And yeah. Yuri is just one of those guys. That's why I like him because he, you know, he may not be like you said. He may not. He may. He may be fight wild and shit like that. But like, there's no doubt about it. When you step inside the step inside a cage with another man and you look across from them and they don't even blink and they're locked in and staring you straight in the face. Like there is an intimidation factor that plays a big part of fighting another man like that who is looks intimidating and it will literally like is is ready to die inside of the inside of the octagon. So like, uh, I don't know. I, now you're making me go back on my word because I just looked up a random stat for him. He has 25 knockouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean Yuri, well, Yuri does it. You know, he's yeah, been there. Yeah. He's- yeah, I like for me personally, I like Yuri in this. I think this is the bound kind of a bounce back fight for sure. Yuri. Um, cause I do think he is, you know, he, he belongs in the top three conversation in the light heavyweight division, um, that is shown to be a pretty shallow division for that matter. Um, Alexander Rochik haven't, hasn't really fought anyone. He fought Jan and lost. Jan yep. was like the first kind of big name he fought and he lost. Um, you know, I don't know how you go from a loss to Jan to jumping to fight Yuri. I feel like that's crazy. Um, but that kind of shows me how shallow the light heavyweight division is right now. It should be Yuri versus Ankalaev. Yeah, right, right. Um, so, but that's you know that's a that's a whole different whole different but thing. I feel and, like they're holding out Ankalaev to fight the winner of Jamal Hill Pajeda. Well, it's it's it, I, I don't I don't know what the deal is with a lot of those fighters. Um, you know, for some reason, it seems like a lot of these fighters don't, uh, you know, like obviously, okay. So you have Ramadan, um, yep. starts, you know, it started March 10th and goes till April 9th. So those guys are fasting right now. Yep. So they're not in, tra- you know, they're probably in a very limited training camp. So there's a reason why none of them are on UFC 300 why you don't get Islam on 300, why you don't get Muhammad uncle or uh, uncle life on 300. Why? Yep. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to disrespect that. I respect that. Um, but at the same time, like it, it allows, you know, guys like Rochick to get a shot that, if, you know, in my deserve. opinion, don't really deserve it. Sure. Um, like why couldn't yawn fight, you know? Yeah. It's, you know, and, and, you know, it just is what it is. I mean, this is the matchup we got. Um, but because of this being the matchup that we got, I, I agree with Nick in the sense that, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, Yuri is good for a light heavyweight division in the UFC that isn't great. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, yay, beat Glover for the belt, but like Glover was 42 years old. Um, which is crazy to think that back in the day, this was the division. Yeah, it's it's it changes all the time, right? I mean, it, yeah. it happens it happens quick. It changes all the time. You have guys move on, guys move weight divisions, um, new champions, new prospects rise, um, and it'll flip at some point and light heavyweight will be, you know, dominant again, but it's just extremely shallow right now. Um, uh, but I do think this is a bounce back for Yuri. Uh Yuri has just fought way, way, way better competition than Rochik has. Um, you know, like I said, Rochik's coming off a loss to Jan uh, Blahovich, and and you know he hadn't fought anybody like Yuri. I think Yuri wins by KO. Sick. So good take. Um, yeah. So that wraps up the prelims. Um, again, if you're tuning into this episode, we are about to get on to the main card. So make sure you are watching, subscribing, liking the video, so you can keep along and watch along. Um, so if you're, if you're watching this one, this was the prelim video, make sure you tune into the next video for the main card where we're going to break it down in detail. Uh, just like we've done the rest of them. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, and we'll catch you guys for the main card next. Ciao, ciao.